This knife is the Dagger Sparrow, and it's probably the coolest piece that I got on the channel so far. Just look at this screaming school clip, and how well it looks over the Ghost G10. This Sparrow has an amazing flipper action, and a super fidgety button lock, plus it comes with a secret feature that will blow your mind when I tell you about it. Hey everyone, welcome to Salvo EDC. In today's video, I will review the Sparrow from Dagger Knives. But before we jump in, I want to know what's the wildest looking knife you own, so please let me know down in the comments. Personally, I love schools, skeletons and edgy stuff like that, so when I learned that there was a brand out there that puts screaming school clips on their entire lineup, I got excited. This is how I got this Sparrow. Before this knife, I already had a Blade HQ exclusive Isanzo with similar Ghost Jitan scales that I very often carried alongside my sock bottle opener. I really love this spooky genre, and I quickly became a fan of the Sparrow in terms of looks. These blue eyes on the school clip also remind me of White Walkers from Game of Thrones, and since winter is coming, why not carry a fitting knife every day? Besides fashion, this pocket clip also works amazingly, as this dagger school clip ends with a flat surface, so this clip doesn't poke at all, plus it has a creative twist on it. The only thing I was worried about was these decorative screws, as their heads are not recessed, but fortunately, they work just fine. Another huge pro for this clip is that its base sinks into the G10, and its retention is pretty strong. But as a lanyard fanboy, drawing the knife was never a problem anyway, I was much more afraid to lose it. The Dagger Sparrow also doubles down on the fun, since it comes with a super fidget friendly flipper action with this forward facing flipper tab, which makes the knife virtually impossible to misfire. I already flicked this knife open at least a thousand times, but it still puts a dirty little smirk on my face every time this blade deploys with the speed of a rocket. You can also see that I use this tab quite a lot as I completely removed the coating from the metal. Closing the sparrow is also super smooth as the blade can effortlessly glide back and forth. Maybe the closest thing I would compare to this level of smoothness is the Spyderco smock. That knife also opens with a similarly understated flipper tab and just like the dagger sparrow it also has a button lock. However, their button locks work way differently, as the smock has a button actuated compression lock, meanwhile the sparrow has a button actuated liner lock, which is an exciting solution for both knives. Simply put, Spyderco's compression lock is significantly stronger and more reliable compared to the Sparrow's liner lock. If we look at physics, the smoke clearly has a stronger mechanism and it would take a much larger amount of brute force to crush it. However, if we look at the full picture, this comparison is pretty much pointless as the biggest problem with button lock knives is not their durability. The reason why I don't like or recommend button locks in general is the reason that they can be easily disengaged if you do not pay constant attention while you use them. In these two clips, you can see the sparrow's lock disengage simply by me gripping the scales, which is a big problem, as this is the position where I would normally grip a knife to carve wood or cut rope. And in my opinion, this fatal flaw makes all button locks equally weak and reliable. Due to this reason, I handle every single button lock knife that I have as they were slip joints or detent locks, and I label them completely useless for heavy use or self-defense. I had to tell this because this locking mechanism means such a handicap that it makes a comparison between button locks and conventional locking knives completely pointless. But after we accept this limiting nature of the button lock mechanism, we can move forward and talk about how the Dagger Sparrow is an amazing pocket knife nonetheless, and I prefer it over the Spyderco smock as I find this design a lot more elegant. The Sparrow comes with nested liners, a deep carry clip, amazing weight distribution, and it also looks pretty badass. This is true both when the knife is open and also when it's closed. The Sparrow design has a beautiful, clean shape and amazing ergonomics. On top of every pro, it sells for only 89 bucks which makes it an amazing deal. If you ask me, this price tag is pretty controversial because the build quality is excellent and every way you touch the knife it feels rock solid. The centering is perfect, it has zero blade play and despite being very long and narrow, the handle scales have absolutely zero flex. As a sparrow is the very first dagger I bought, I did not really know what to expect when I put it into my cart, but they definitely impressed me 
and I can't wait to try the future Dagger releases. From a freshly formed company, this build quality is a pretty big deal. The Sparrow also gives me the impression of a refined and mature design, as it has absolutely zero unpleasant surprises. Maybe the only chibi part of this knife is the steel selection, as the Sparrow comes with a 4 inch long D2 blade. Probably this is the main reason why this knife sells under $90. Despite being a budget option, D2 is not a bad steal by the way, and I think it was an acceptable pick from Dagger, because this pretty thin spear point blade benefits greatly from its toughness. A mostly cut cardboard with this knife, and I did not have a problem with the edge retention. However, I found sharpening pretty tough with this one. So I had to use my guided system with diamond stones to give it a new edge. And now that we are already at the cutting edge, I'll bring up a very interesting feature of this sparrow. If you look at the knife carefully, you might realize that this spear point blade is strangely tilted upward, which is an uncommon and very specific design element, typical mainly among foot prep knives. In my opinion, this is a pretty cool feature and I highly appreciate that this sparrow was designed this way. Not only because I love eating but also because most of my other folders suck at prepping food. Generally speaking, I think it's hard to find effective food prep folders nowadays, and I'm extra happy to finally own one. The shape of this Jitan handle also supports the idea, as this pedal naturally aligns itself in my hand the very same way a kitchen knife does. These scales were also milled into a perfect 3D shape, as a result this sparrow became one of the most comfortable knives that I've ever used. Probably this thoughtful grip design is also the reason why I do not hate the button lock on this knife. If you watch my channel you probably know that I always complain about button locks and liner locks, mostly because I find them fragile and unreliable. So I was fully prepared to despise this knife since it comes with a unique blend of a liner lock and a button lock. I thought it was impossible, but this sparrow literally combines my two most hated properties into one thing. Honestly speaking, I was expecting this knife to become my arch enemy. And boom, it became one of my favorite knives instead, which was a huge plot twist. And I'm happy it turned out this way because I love this Ghost G10 and Screaming School Clip combo. If you're also into this spooky genre, I have great news for you. In a previous video, I already introduced this very similar looking Blade HQ exclusive MKM Isanzo, and if you want to know more about this pretty badass folder with this wicked looking hogbill blade, come and watch my review about it. Also consider subscribing because I have other cool knives coming soon, such as this Artisan Cutlery Archeo, which is another super fidget friendly knife with a gorgeous looking Damascus steel. Thank you for watching my video all the way and I'll see you in the next one.